Good afternoon uh, to all you East Coasters and good morning to those out West. Uh, I am so happy to welcome uh, all participants today uh, to the Economic Recovery Corps program webinar. Uh, I'm Craig Burstati, the Deputy Assistant Secretary for Regional Affairs at EDA, uh, which means I cover down on EDA's regional economic development portfolio, our teams in the field, and uh, all of our programs supporting regional economic development, which is why I could not be more excited today to talk about this a groundbreaking innovative program. Uh, before we dive into the details a little bit, uh, I'd like to spend some time talking about the landscape, the landscape of economic development today in the nation. Uh, over the last two years, EDA has received roughly $4.5 billion in uh, unique supplementals to support recovery from the pandemic uh, and has been actively deploying uh, regular annually annual appropriations as well. Uh, this has created an unprecedented historic uh, wave of momentum into our nation's economic development infrastructure, uh, whether that's planning uh, or building actual facilities, roads, training facilities, innovation centers, small business support centers, and more, uh, we have been active through, uh, through our normal continuum of work. Uh, this has resulted in an exciting critical mass across rural economic development efforts, technology-based eco economic development efforts, urban, small business lending uh, through our revolving loan fund portfolio, uh, and so much more. Uh, EDA has realized this, and through the American Rescue Plan is forming networks and communities of practice across different areas of focus. Uh, for those of you who have been following us for a bit lately, you might have caught wind of the very exciting uh, disruptive $1 billion Build Back Better regional challenge that is all about building strong regional coalitions, driving industry growth, uh, or maybe you're uh, into some of the workforce development efforts we've been supporting and following the Good Jobs Challenge. Uh, maybe you, you cross a number of different areas uh, of focus and are leading some economic development planning efforts uh, and frequently coordinate with our economic development districts. Um, my point is that across these verticals and across the, the volume of work, uh, we have a growing opportunity to connect, share, and learn from one another if we're going to truly meet the moment and do this better uh, and accelerate growth in the right direction, we need to learn from one another. Uh, we need to avoid reinventing the wheel, wasting time, resources, et cetera. Uh, and that's what this Communities of Practice portfolio is all about. Now, I know you are here to learn about the Economic Recovery uh, Corps. So how does how does this environment of new emerging networks and communities of practice correlate with the Economic Recovery Corps? Well, this is so much more than just deploying individual fellows into economic development organizations. And I want to say that at the, at the very top, uh, those of you who are looking at this and thinking like, great, we can, we can deploy some talent. Uh, we could increase some capacity. Yes, absolutely. That is the first layer. Uh, we want to be able to increase capacity in local and regional economic development. So those communities have, the, excuse me, I should say the most distressed communities or strategic areas for economic development can benefit from increased capacity. But that lays the groundwork for building a system and network for change across the ecosystem. 
So as you learn about this program, think about building a system for real scale and change. Uh, we want a platform of expert economic development talent uh, where we can spread, share, and scale innovative new models, practices, uh, data, research, and more so we can do this better, faster, uh, and with greater chance of leaving legacy institutional marks. Um, and that system should factor in all that infrastructure that I shared earlier. With nearly 5 billion in investments in the last two years, how can we leverage that strategically as one, as a whole, rather than just doing this work in small distressed regions or communities? How can we build that connectivity with intentionality across the nation? That will create change at scale, um, and there's no one better to talk to us about this program and that opportunity uh, than Ms. Brittany Sickler. Brittany is our Communities Program Manager uh, and will run through the details of this program and talk about what we're looking for, uh, and for many of you, most, what's most important, how to apply. Uh, Brittany, thanks so much. Please take it away. Uh, one of our primary goals today is to provide so just additional detail and clarification uh, around this funding opportunity as the Economic Recovery Core was built to leverage a creativity and a flexibility from the market, from all of you, uh, while maintaining a strong core. Uh, so we have quite a bit of information to go through. Uh, and uh, in terms of housekeeping, before jumping into that, uh, please use the Q&A function. Let us know if we have any additional uh, uh, IT issues, but um, also please let us know if you have any thoughts from what you've understood so far in the ERC, what would you like to see addressed today? Uh, we'll attempt to answer some of those questions in the chat so folks can uh, be able to see what's going on and what's being shared. Uh, we'll also have a section for Q&A, especially for those uh, questions that might require some nuanced answers. And as you can imagine, there will be, or most likely will be some questions we're not able to address today or might require some additional follow-up. Uh, and we do plan to have those listed in an updated FAQ section uh, on the site. All of you that are here registered, we have your email addresses and we will be sending you the notice when the slides, the recording, and those FAQs uh, are posted. Uh, also wanted to mention that uh, Sam Pressler and Shelby Wenner are my wonderful colleagues uh, using their magic and skills to be providing you with some of that information in the chat. Uh, so big thanks uh, to the two of them for their support. Um, we've also uh, just wanted uh, folks to be able to share. I see uh, Gerald here shared uh, where he's from in case uh, people did want to try to connect uh, with one another. The, the platform will be open and the Q&A box open for uh, a time after the webinar. And so if you want to uh, refrain and, and be able to uh, hold off on your introductions of yourself and possibly have some connection at that point. Uh, all right, uh, moving to the next slide. Before we get started uh, specifically with the Economic Recovery Core, and that's what we're here to dive into today, wanted to mention that most of you will have noticed the NOFO does fund or bring up, up to light two distinct programs. Uh, they are both designed to support distressed communities and underserved populations across the country uh, in developing successful economic development plans and projects. Um, but before but before we can jump in, I do want to just mention that they are distinct programs um, and that the Equity Impact Investment Program will be providing funding for technical assistance uh, geared to underserved populations and communities at a different scale and to a different purpose than the Economic Recovery Core. Uh, and so each has a different uh, distinct evaluation criteria. They're meant to be looked at as two different opportunities uh, not to be combined. Uh, that was a question that was raised in yesterday's uh, webinar that featured the Equity Impact Investments Program. That recording isn't up yet, but hopefully will be soon. And so for those of you who may have missed that, in case the Fellows Program overshadowed, uh, I do recommend if you are interested in checking that out uh, to review 
the web page and also look at the, um, the NOFO and the recording. Um, we do have collaboration kind of built throughout the fabric of EDA, throughout what we're going, uh, going to be going through today, but did want to make the distinction that the NOFO combination has the two programs under one uh, umbrella, but they are not meant to be combined in terms of the actual proposals um, and uh, applications that come in. On the next slide. Today on the call, I see some familiar names and uh, new folks at the table, which is fantastic. I know that in our list, we had a mixture of interested national organizations. Uh, we had curious individuals, community organizations, excited supporters, and of course, uh, of course, a host of possible critics. Uh, regardless of who you are, please share your ideas and thoughts with us. Based on the engagement today, we may consider hosting a follow-up discussion to go even deeper into the conversation around strengthening design and strategy opportunities. Uh, so again, much of what we're bringing up today has already been uh, a question or a concern or a question from folks uh, after seeing what's come out over the last few days. And so definitely appreciate your, um, your thoughts and perspectives. Uh, the recovery core is coming from uh, just a place of, of so, so much need and informed by so much of what has happened uh, around the field. Uh, one of the easiest ways to break down the program is to see these main elements uh, side by side. Uh, the network operator, actually, if we can go to the last slide. Uh, the network operator, so side by side here. Um, the network operator is to be funded through this NOFO and the fellows who come into place during implementation of the ERC. Uh, so the network operator servicing from this very competition, we want to encourage potential applicants to fully consider the requirements to apply in addition to the eligibility. It's going to take significant effort to fully address the NOFO and ultimately we will only finalize one award. We're going to go into more details on the fellows shortly, but these dedicated individuals will become a visible face to the ERC. Uh, they will be recruited, trained, uh, paid, connected through the efforts of the network operator. They will not be EDA employees uh, nor volunteers. Um, fellows are also going to be meeting eligibility requirements that will be defined by the network operator with EDA. Uh, and they'll bring relevant experience to, the, to face those challenges head on. Fellows will also be placed in host entities uh, to be determined also through that partnership between EDA and the network operator. Uh, and you'll also see that the NOFO references a number of fellows, and there's a range, at least 50, 50 to 75, um, but do want to note that competitive proposals will list out a strategy to uh, potentially support even more. Moving on to the next slide. In terms of key program activities. We've organized the targeted activities into two main areas, technical assistance and knowledge and insights, both for the network operator as well as for the fellows. Uh, this guidance and the examples uh, that we'll share even shortly have come directly and indirectly, not only from current EDA grantees, and that includes economic development district organizations, university centers, uh, state local governments, uh, many who have funded disaster or recovery coordinators uh, over recent years in particular. Uh, also EDA regional offices, including some of those efforts uh, where they have been able to supplement staffing in partner organizations uh, through VISTA, AmeriCorps VISTA placements. So EDA has looked into to what has been going on, has been able to glean from, from those efforts and, and from that direct um, uh, feedback more details on the need and how the Economic Recovery Corps can rise up to, to meet that, providing a structure, but also a flexibility um, that hasn't necessarily been found before. Also wanted to note that uh, EDA has been long funding research, technical assistance on a local level, as well as a national level, uh, projects that have highlighted more timely issues across this diverse and complex landscape. Uh, so in the NOFO, please do note that in those sections, um, we're talking about example activities for the network operator and have divided them up and as well for the fellows and tried to categorize them in a way where 
uh, folks are really getting to the heart of how are we addressing needs and how do those large scale ideas translate into concrete and specific activities. On the next slide, as we're looking at the actual or, or talking in general about the actual activities, also I wanted to mention uh, in terms of what we're trying to achieve, there's five larger outcomes uh, that we're anticipating and, and working hard uh, to, to get to. Uh, while the ERC is not destined to meet every need nor reach every individual entity that could use support, uh, it's definitely our intent to drive these informed outcomes forward uh, and with the help of this community. Uh, many of you will not apply to this funding opportunity. Perhaps you aren't uh, in line to become a fellow or even a host entity. But regardless, there'll be space for all of us uh, in the economic development landscape to come away with some kind of benefit from other, whether it be another federal agency uh, to local economic development organizations uh, to community members. Uh, so we're definitely trying to break down possible ways that folks can engage uh, and how we can be able to share all of the work and all of the outcomes that we're uh, attempting to build towards. Here we tie the threads uh, together, trying to take us from activities to outputs, to outcomes and higher level impacts. Uh, we've provided many examples throughout that NOFO and this deck, and we want to emphasize uh, the areas where applicants should not feel constrained by those specific items listed, uh, while at the same time cautioning applicants to not include every possible strategy into one proposal. Moving on to the next slide, to the next section. Um, on the next slide, uh, we'll talk about EDA, the role of EDA. Um, EDA envisions working closely with the network operator to shape the program, uh, both at the outset and over time. Uh, so on the next slide, you can see we built the cooperative agreement to reflect that partnership uh, involvement, especially for uh, the important parts of defining the scope including the approval of the fellows plan and site placement. Um, while we have a short timeline, unfortunately, for receiving applications, we are anticipating up to six months after the award starts to finalize that structure and guarantee the ERC sets out on a firm foundation uh, to increase capacity and affect that change. I'll go more into the timeline um, towards the end of the webinar. I especially want to note here uh, the creation of stronger links across planning efforts, uh, current and previous, uh, including many of the recent uh, kind of additional statewide planning awards that have gone out, um, and the amplification of practice sharing uh, to look forward and proactively shape uh, what is to come. On the next slide, we talk about the network operator, uh, not just deploying individuals, but creating infrastructure. And so it is a, a, a definite step back uh, to try to let that sink in. More specifically, we're, we're trying to create a stronger national economic recovery uh, framework that's grounded in equitable outcomes. And so beyond being a simple uh, facilitator of fellows, uh, if you're looking at the program description, you can see that the network operator not a staffing surface, surface, service, but instead uh, we'll use their vantage point to identify crucial ideas and, and practices and go a step further to improve, connect, and communicate that work. While creativity and approach is encouraged, and that is also from the NOFO, uh, especially to engage new underserved communities, all strategies uh, should clearly plan to include EDA funded organizations or networks, um, keeping in mind uh, a bit of today's introduction, if you're able to catch that in terms of the investment and the reach that EDA has, um, has had into organizations around the country, we want to make sure that that connection uh, between those previous investments uh, is tight with the future possibilities. Moving to the next slide, uh, talking about the fellows, We've been receiving many requests to actually sign up to be a fellow. The enthusiasm is admirable. Um, and while we need to uh, discuss the fellows and guidance around what their work will do, I, I want to emphasize that EDA is, is not directly hiring the fellows uh, and, and that 
fellows um, applications are, are not included at this time. Um, fellows are obviously a key part of the award. At this point, the, the fellows aren't here yet. Applicants will be putting applicants to the NOFA will be putting together a detailed plan on their targeted, uh, the fellows targeted or possible skill sets, where they will come from, uh, such as within the very communities that may host a fellow or from outside uh, the place that might not have an available pool of uh, folks to uh, draw from uh, to support their work. And how, the, how will those fellows contribute in truly culturally competent ways uh, a challenge for all of our applicants um, to express uh, that nuance. Fellows will work in host organizations, but engage with a wide variety of stakeholders and with each other. Uh, meant to, uh, they're meant to not only do work, uh, not even on their own, but not they're not meant to just do work within the organization, but to be able to tie that across this larger group, uh, across the the country um, as uh, as relevant and really be able to dream and, and make connections uh, in a way that might not have been possible in more disparate activities and programs. They will need to be fully supported to effectively provide uh, any kind of high quality assistance and training, uh, as well as to maintain uh, an adaptability uh, in terms of the kind of work that's done to align with both the short and long term needs. On the next slide, we'll talk about the, the network. Um, again, as we think about the network operator, the many organizations that were likely to come together to lead this, uh, not just uh, one uh, individual applicant, but all of those partners that come together to be that network operator. Think about the fellows, uh, the host entities, the partners, and uh, us even that are here today. A network of networks um, forming to strengthen that, that co connectivity, that practice sharing and innovation across the economic development field. Moving to the next slide. Um, given uh, actually on the next slide, the, the specific guidance on ap uh, applicant capacity, um, you know, just really want to drive home that the network operator will be or likely be a coalition of organizations uh, likely with one lead applicant. Um, partners in, included in that proposal should be appropriately listed as either sub-awardees, subcontractors, all the roles clearly defined and the strategy for why the individual organizations are coming together uh, to be able to launch this. Um, the desired qualifications, again, are, are fairly explicit. That mixture of expertise around running a fellowship or fellowship-like program in, ad in addition to deep economic development training, uh, coordination across underserved communities, uh, and managing a, a large federal award. EDA really does seek proposals uh, that are high impact and, and broad in their geographic reach, and also ask applicants to propose the, the best model to achieve that impact and geographic reach. Uh, the uh, eligible ap applicants you can see on the right uh, of the screen and uh, want to make sure for those who have already um, inquired about for-profits, which are not an eligible entity uh, or uh, individuals, which are also not included um, here in this uh, proposal. On the next slide. The evaluation criteria is uh, the, the crux of what's going to give you the, the most specific information uh, of what goes into your narrative. Uh, here I have listed out the different categories, which are fairly standard if you've looked at many of the previous funding opportunities uh, in recent past. But I cannot stress enough how important it is to carefully read this section of the NOFO organize and tailor your proposal to pay attention to all of the prompts listed under these sections. And note that there are specific sections just for the Economic Recovery Corps, uh, as well as some specific sections only relevant to the Equity Impact Investment Program. Um, many of the, the criteria are also combined. Um, I won't be going through all of them today, but did want to highlight, especially for strategic approach, going to be the, the section where the plan is fully described. 
How will the project increase capacity of host entities and distressed regions? It'll have that compelling description of how to recruit, train, pay, and place a diverse class of fellows, including the specific selection criteria, uh, have that quality of a placement and compensation strategy, including that process to select the placement regions and solicit those host entities going to be the strength of the proposed plan to increase fellows' understanding of economic development principles and really set them up for success through training and relevant peer connections. On the organizational applicant capacity, personnel, really that chance to, to articulate the expertise of the applicant and, and that partner group and the personnel dedicated to the project. For, for the feasibility, making sure that Challenges and risks are identified and strategies are proposed uh, to be able to um, encounter or, or at least um, find a way to, to move forward uh, despite some of the challenges, especially as we can imagine uh, with a fellows program that is looking to uh, attract individuals for a three-year period of time. On the cross-collaboration, uh, including in your approach to work with relevant EDA grantees. And as I mentioned earlier, including the economic development districts, university centers, other federal agencies supporting economic development organizations. Uh, there are also uh, work to be, there are also, also collaborative work with EDA's regional offices and uh, other resource, research partners. The sustainability side, a clear vision on how this project uh, might be funded long term. Uh, the, We'll go into budget here shortly, but the uh, program isn't um, committed to be funded uh, in entirely in, in, into the future uh, forever. And so uh, how will a plan be put together and submitted as part of the narrative uh, that can describe uh, potential future and, and how would that impact the start of the economic recovery core um, and as we're already looking towards the end. On sustainability, uh, scalability, that clear vision on how this, um, uh, sorry, on the feasibility of the budget and financial match, that strength of the proposed management plan, especially uh, for an award of this size, how will you achieve those project goals, manage those partner organizations and project staff accordingly. I'll pause there on the evaluation criteria. Folks have specific questions on those. Uh, we can throw those in the chat and I'll put those on my list to tackle at the end. Uh, but we can go ahead to those EDA investment priorities. Um, and so we at EDA take our, our responsibility seriously in terms of creating an inclusive, equitable recovery. Um, that is why uh, last spring we revised our investment priorities. Uh, most folks have seen these by now, but wanted to highlight that these are the principles that guide our grant giving the equity, recovery, and resilience at the top of that list, which happen to be the ones most shown throughout this NOFO and the program. Um, however, since we are looking at supporting a variety uh, of topics and needs uh, from economic development organizations around the country, um, you can believe that all the investment priorities will uh, surface in the work um, and, and should be addressed uh, in the proposal as well. On the next slide, we do have um, not a complete list of challenges and risks, but this is, these are there are likely to be uh, many constraints, uh, and so wanted to highlight the need to fully identify those. Um, in particular, uh, looking at fellows' recruitment, the proper matching, that possible attrition looking at being able to uh, appropriately connect uh, individuals to the organizations and structure those relationships in a very positive way, uh, respecting previous work that's been done um, and supported while also looking for uh, new support um, and coordination. And being able to look across the country as a, a, a place full of very different uh, contexts. And so that is a, a, a challenge, a risk, and an opportunity here in this proposal uh, to be able to dive deeper and not, um, and not 
cut with a general uh, cloth what needs to be done, but really matching up uh, needs with uh, possible uh, solutions. And, and again, that the, the hands-on support to be able to take projects to places where they weren't able to go before and to, to connect uh, regions and, and places in a way that hasn't necessarily been organized in this fashion uh, previous as well. On the next slide, this is one of my favorites, um, just showing a few areas of opportunity. Despite the clear guide rails of most of the NOFO, applicants do have the ability to still propose highly responsive and informed design. Uh, again, this is not a prescriptive list, but is, is meant to show that there are areas where the strategy can again uh, target and be more defined. There could be design around qualifications. Uh, as I had mentioned earlier and referenced on the one of the initial slides, fellows will likely be asked to have some level of uh, experience in economic development. And so if, whether we're looking at putting forward uh, a proposal to have more experienced professionals, a strategic mix uh, of varying levels of degree um, is uh, definitely something to be considered, an important part of what would be feasible, uh, again, both in that plan to recruit the fellows, to support the fellows, and to anticipate those outcomes, what will they be able to achieve uh, as a mid-level economic development uh, career professional uh, versus someone who may be more experienced. Also, how does that align with the uh, training program uh, meant to go around and uh, support those fellows? Also, identifying and addressing gaps in talent needs, and so skills needed for a SEDS modernization or skills um, needed for certain you know, geographic capacity development, that's rural or urban, uh, specific types of project development requires a, a, a different talent need. Uh, so perhaps there could be the ability to, to put forward uh, certain targeted areas for scale. Uh, identify potential, you could identify potential sub cohorts. Maybe there is a focus on a certain percentage of fellows uh, with uh, expertise in the technology-based economic development realm on innovation. Uh, it could be infrastructure, tying together projects also with workforce development uh, or environment, uh, climate concerns, uh, especially as it relates to, to future economic development planning. And then, you know, last but obviously not, not least, or not, not a full list here either, is considering that reach. And so the placement uh, really can, can range, uh, and the strategy behind uh, focusing on more highly localized target areas is, uh, statewide efforts could be potential for strategic locations or for a certain number of fellows uh, or even large, no, larger regional collaboration. So definitely wanted to highlight um, the fact that uh, we have an opportunity here to create together a modern fellowship program. And again, despite some of those constraints that, that are listed uh, throughout the, the notice of, of funding opportunity, uh, there are opportunities for uh, for design, for careful consideration, for that creativity. Uh, and we definitely look forward to seeing um, what is proposed and, and what can be done here together. Uh, well, nothing can be done without money. So going on to the next slide, uh, we'll talk about budget. Uh, the budget list in the NOFO estimates the economic recovery core to be between 20 to 25 million. I know many, many individuals have had questions on how do we have such a range uh, and, and why. Uh, we do anticipate more precise funding information, um, but you should build your budgets, any applicant around the, the low end of that anticipated range with the capacity to scale to higher funding amounts. Uh, so I hope that can be a helpful guidance in understanding as, as those of you who seriously do go down this path and start to break down the plan, the people involved, what kind of financial resources uh, will be needed. Uh, building a budget with the knowledge that EDA will be uh, adjusting that a dollar amount, I think will be more helpful uh, for those proposals or that proposal that will go forward. 
Uh, there's a, I do see a, a question on, uh, on actually back to the, the budget on match. Uh, we don't have financial math, match listed here. Uh, a match is not required. This is a 100% grant rate. Um, however, uh, financial match may may help in some of the uh, points in terms of collaboration. There's a place to list that and describe that in the evaluation criteria. Uh, and it's also related to the sustainability plan in terms of even if a financial match cannot be guaranteed in this short time frame, where are some potential sources uh, how can other programs or opportunities be stacked and uh, be able to support, uh, leverage this opportunity, uh, both in content, uh, reach, or, or scale? I also want to take a moment to reiterate that the Economic Recovery Corps will only have one award. There will only be one cooperative agreement that comes from this part of the Notice of Funding Opportunity. Uh, at a minimum, between the two programs, each will have one, and the Equity Investment uh, Impact Investment Program uh, may have additional awards. However, the Economic Recovery Corps will only have one award, and that will likely uh, land between 20 to 25 million, uh, give or take. In your proposal, definitely be uh, setting the appropriate targets. This is a large funding opportunity, and uh, I know many are interested just based off of that bottom line number, but it will also be competitive and we'll be looking very closely at where funding is going and how much is going towards the network operator and how much of the funding is going towards the fellows and the cost of paying uh, and supporting the fellows. Uh, and so that is a definitely an important piece to keep in mind when looking at the budget that it's not just one pop, we'll, we'll be diving into uh, the plan to be able to pay for the activities um, and what's going to be uh, strategic and impactful uh, to that extent. All right, uh, we'll move on to the key phases within the award period. Uh, these are given uh, more as a guidance uh, in terms of expectations. Uh, again, with the proposals due August 5th, uh, we know that working with uh, us and our team will have many things to iron out and work out, and that preparation phase uh, should give us the moment to be able to do that. Uh, we'll also anticipate uh, time to be able to uh, recruit, uh, train, and, and place those fellows uh, with the goal of having them in place uh, for three years. There's uh, some flexibility around that, and I also wanna take a moment to mention, if we don't get your questions answered here, um, if you do have specifics on that, you can reach out to us via email as well. Um, again, it, this is to help give you an idea of how to structure uh, that portion of what does it mean and, and how do those costs even align then when we're looking at planning versus actually um, paying and supporting. Um, again, the flexibility, should there be a strategic approach uh, for interested groups that wanna run that by the team, um, some of that on an individual level maybe better addressed at the networks at eda.gov. On the next slide, we have the application award timeline. Uh, basically, it's going by quickly. And so we will be closing the opportunity on August 5th. We'll be reviewing immediately um, from that point into September uh, with the goal to have that award finalized by the end of September, announcing shortly after. The funding that we have for this program ends, uh, expires in, in, in 2027, and so the performance uh, period end will be May 31st, 2021. Uh, for those who are putting start dates to their period of performance, uh, you can estimate uh, an October 1st uh, start date. And then on the last slide, what's next? Uh, read and reread the Notice of Funding Opportunity, paying particular attention uh, to the, the evaluation criteria, to the descriptions. Uh, we've tried to make things as clear as possible. Uh, however, there we are also aware there's a complexity that uh, is not always helpful. So in today's webinar, uh, we'll have now the next 15 minutes for some questions, but 
uh, please do make sure to go to the NOFO. That is the legal document giving all of the guidelines instructions around uh, applying for this funding opportunity. If this speaks to your organization's mission, uh, if you need to find appropriate partners, uh, make sure to get them together early. Uh, be able to put together your plan and uh, submit. Uh, I, I don't think anyone will be able to submit too far in advance of the deadline, but uh, please don't wait too long to submit and make sure that you can avoid any of those uh, technical difficulties that may arise. Uh, also wanted to mention many of you are coming in with strong EDA regional office relationships. Well, I would recommend notifying your existing contact, contacts there, um, letting them know about your intent or interest to apply. It is important to submit all your questions and concerns to our networks team uh, for that guidance, the networks at eda.gov. Since we're running this uh, competition through EDA's headquarters um, in cl collaboration with our, our regional offices, um, but want to make sure that um, all of you know that you can come to the networks team to be able to get that guidance. I know I speak for many of us at EDA uh, that uh, we are absolutely thrilled to have this opportunity to serve the economic development community. Uh, we're committed to this program. We're thankful for your interest. Um, and another big thanks to those of you who have supported this journey uh, especially those who have been uh, sharing their encouragement, their insights, lessons learned uh, to help us be able to shape uh, the program and, and in a way that will you know, provide that benefit and influence and uh, again, uh, be able to include so many more of us um, that may be then, then directly involved um, into the future. So I'm very thankful for that. Um, I will pause now from the slides and uh, take a turn to see how things have been going in the questions. Uh, I know that uh, I believe Sam has been furiously writing uh, or addressing your, your questions, but please do uh, throw those in and I will start to look to see what else I can uh, speak to um, in our remaining time together. Fellows, uh, is a fellows compensation derived from the Economic Recovery Corps funding through the network operator or will host entities compensate fellows? Great question to clarify. The funding for the fellows is through the 20 to $25 million Economic Recovery Corps funding. Uh, we do not um, expect host entities to pay for the fellows uh, involvement. Again, uh, the goal is to be able to help uh, those host entities in ways where they haven't been able to fully address their, their staffing, their technical uh, needs, um, to that point. Uh, so it's to augment their staff and complement those efforts uh, and not for them to just have an easy access to, to someone to, to come in. There's another related question that is the University Center program, um, for those of you who are familiar, uh, a service model that would be envisioned for fellows. Uh, for example, one fellow serving multiple organizations in a geographic region. That's a great question and less of a very clear or concise answer. Um, and that goes back to the slide on designing a modern fellowship program. There's the ability to have a mixture uh, or separate um, but related strategies around fellowship placement. Um, and so one option for applicants to consider would be to have uh, select individuals uh, be in a university center-like position where they are serving a larger area uh, or multiple organizations. Something that's important though to ground yourself in is going back to the expected outcomes and outputs and make sure that if you're designing a strategy, not to have it heavily weighted so that it would be hard or harder to reach some of those outcomes. Uh, so it may be less likely that all fellows would cover a large area um, for reaching some of the goals that may be more apparent on a local um, spot. Uh, for host organization, uh, this sounds uh, similar to AmeriCorps VISTA. Uh, challenges with AmeriCorps are the costs, the shares, um, you know, that have to have money help um, does this program require the same investment from host organizations? 
while the details around the host entity agreements will be uh, confirmed and finalized later on, we can say that uh, no, there will not be an, an upfront cost uh, arrangement. Uh, again, that is a, a benefit, a differentiation from uh, for this program than for other fellowship programs. Uh, now, there will be other obligations and commitments by that host entity, as you can imagine, at a base level to be able to provide the, the guidance um, on the ground at that level, to be able to provide space and other resources. Um, but not uh, in terms of that financial cost cost care. Uh, can we confirm what organizations are eligible to host receive assistance from the fellows who are part of the program once it begins? Um, EDOs, economic development organizations, do they have to be EDA designated EDDs? Again, uh, I hate to say that uh, the, the the organizations. Um, uh, since we haven't fully defined the host entity plans, we can say that yes, they will be economic development organizations, which encompasses a wide range of organization types. Um, we have also said that we really want to see the involvement of EDA funded entities, uh, which includes those uh, EDD uh, designation uh, organizations, uh, but it is not required that every entity that hosts would be an EDA grantee. In fact, there may be some strategic benefit to hosting a fellow in an organization where they can reach many uh, EDA grantees, current, past, or, or future. Can you provide an example of what the money can be used for? Uh, can it pay for grants for small businesses in disadvantaged communities, or is this the way to increase knowledge of disadvantaged communities about um, other loans or, or programs? So this is a good clarifying question as well. Uh, in terms of the budget, uh, the budget is uh, meant to pay for that network operator and the costs of the fellows. Uh, now, to the extent that it is, um, uh, you know, asked to be used for other economic development activities, we would say that it, it would not be covering other programs. We're striving to not duplicate other EDA or, in this case, SBA programs. Uh, and so we are sticking uh, to the Economic Recovery Corps um, uh, goal to, to be able to fund a strong cohort, again, that network and the connections uh, to be able to provide that technical assistance and the, those insights um, and not fund um, uh, small businesses or actual projects. We're gonna be funding the capacity, the assistance, the connections, the possible grant writing. There's uh, a slew of examples that are listed in that NOFO um, in terms of the activities, um, but basically you would, you can imagine that the funding would go towards the work, of the paying for the fellows to perform the work um, and not actually paying for any uh, sub grants um, outside of that coalition of the network uh, operator. Another, some more questions on match. So just to confirm that no match financial match is required. Um, if a financial match is uh, possible or, or likely, uh, there is a, a request for that to be in the uh, narrative and, and it is part of the, uh, um, a small part of the evaluation criteria combined with a potential plan for the financial sustainability of the fellows into the future. Uh, there's just another general question on applying um, and, and I think this goes back to the, the NOFO, having the two programs. Um, is it recommended to apply to only one program, even if you have two separates, two separate programs, maybe in your entity? Um, it is uh, uh, unlikely that many entities would both be eligible, interested in being the lead applicant for the Economic Recovery Corps at that 20 to 25 million, as well as in the Equ Equity Impact Investment Program. Um, which those budgets are requested to be three to six million. Um, it might not be um, uh, too strange for some organizations that could have a different uh, uh, sectors of, of their mission area. But again, as we say, it's unlikely. A lot of that might stem from the capacity, being able to demonstrate uh, capacity. And so there are other ways to be uh, involved as well. It might not be as a lead applicant, but might be in that group of organizations uh, that would be working together 
uh, to, to apply and compete for this opportunity. Uh, again, I see uh, just answer, or sorry, questions on that, that 20 to 25 million, again, is for one award, uh, which does make this a, a challenging competition, uh, which is why, again, if you do have more ideas, comments, we're almost coming to the end of our time. Uh, but as I mentioned, based off of uh, what we received today, if we're not able to address everything fully in the FAQs, uh, we will send out notice uh, to this list and publicly for uh, a follow-up webinar to dive deeper and show more examples and models. I think we've gotten through the majority of our our, our, our more uh, highlighted questions. Um, I will give everyone just one last call uh, to put some here in the chat. Uh, there are some more specific questions. I think we'll be able to get some of these pretty easily in the FAQs in terms of the match, uh, in kind. Um, I think there are some more host organization questions. Let's see if we can tackle those. Um, there are questions on uh, if uh, regional representatives uh, for, I'm not quite sure if this is for EDA or for their state economic development group, but Will they have information on applicants and a recommendation for how to become a fellows host entity? Um, once we have that plan fully defined and are moving forward, we'll have a system to be able to take in applicants, obviously, for the, the fellows and for the host entities. The network operator will be in charge of that. And we will, on the EDA side, be sure to, um, to, to help and support the outreach so that all organizations uh, that have been interested here, all of the EDA uh, community in the past, um, all of our partner organizations currently that work with communities that might not be as closely related, uh, will all have sufficient time to be able to look through what, um, what would be possible, or how they would apply, um, and what that placement um, strategy would, would turn out to be. So at this point, no, um, we're, we don't have any of that information available. We're fully focused on setting a strong structure and foundation uh, to build that, um, the, the network operator, uh, to build the network to make sure that we're not too focused uh, on just what are these fellows and the exact projects, but how are we at scale uh, being able to, to connect uh, across our communities, across our programs, um, and how might these fellows play a role uh, in all of us in supporting that. I see the time, and uh, unfortunately, I, I feel like the last questions might not be able to, to, to be addressed in this uh, quick hour, but again, wanted to share my sincere appreciation for your interest. Uh, thanks to those of you who, who even joined, not quite knowing what you were getting into, uh, I hope we were able to you know, demystify a little bit of the process uh, or at least surface more of the, the gaps or, or, or confusing elements um, for us to then follow up with here near in the future. But um, thanks to the EDA team uh, for uh, your support in getting this out. We couldn't do any of this uh, without you. And uh, please look uh, to see a notice in the coming days uh, where we'll be sharing that link to the recording. We'll be sharing the webinar slides, the updated FAQs, um, and even point out some useful templates. Right now on uh, the um, ERC website, we do even have a sample uh, budget and timeline template up, and we will have a, a one-pager and some other uh, tools uh, possibly available here in the near future. Um, just uh, again, uh, thank you, and uh, really look forward to not only working with all of you in this application period, but really looking forward to seeing the amazing designs um, and uh, passion that we know will come through. Um, so really appreciate it. All right, take care.